Today we're going to be making coffee with the AeroPress. It's uh, the fastest way to make coffee except for the Keurig. So anyway, you start with uh, your filters and you put one or two filters in the bottom of this and you can wash them and reuse them. Paper filters, they say, are good for about six uses. Uh, if you put two filters in, you will get a little bit less bitter coffee, be a little smoother. So that screws on to the bottom. This is where you will put your coffee grounds. And it sits on top of your cup like that. This is the plunger. You will put your coffee grounds and water in here, put the plunger in, push it through, and it'll force the coffee out the bottom. It takes about a minute to make coffee with this. This is gonna take longer because I'm talking and explaining things. So anyway, this is just a funnel for putting your coffee grounds in. This is my Hario V60. This will be my next trial. This is a drip coffee maker. And uh, I've got a Chamix, or Chemix, depending on how you want to say that, which is glass. And, uh, and it was the holy grail of drip coffee makers. But this Hario has a uh, big following. It's made in Japan. And uh, my filters haven't come yet, so I can't uh, demonstrate it. But inside, you'll see it's got uh, protrusions in here. And that keeps the filter from laying flat against the side once it's wet. It allows gases to escape up uh, from the coffee that's uh, settling in the bottom. And, uh, and it also allows more use of the filter as it can uh, drain the water uh, soaked from the grounds out through the sides and through the bottom. Most coffee drips only uh, soak out through the bottom. So it's supposed to make a much better cup of coffee than the Chemix. So we'll uh, put that in a future video. For now, I'm going to have to grind some coffee. This is my new coffee canister. It's uh, got a date reminder on the top so you know when your coffee is getting too old. Time to dump it out. It has a measuring spoon on it. And it's got a one-way seal so that as the beans age, they produce carbon dioxide, and that has to be able to escape or it affects the flavor of the beans. So that escapes with a one-way valve. You can't get air in, but it can get the CO2 out. So we're going to put some scoops into my new burr grinder, and uh, we'll grind this up and make a cup of coffee. This is my new burr grinder. And we'll seal that back up and put that up in a nice cool cabinet. Now we'll turn the power on and then we'll turn it on timer. We'll let it run for 25 seconds. Okay, now the coffee grounds are in here. We're going to use one full rounded scoop.
now the directions say to shake this so that the grounds are level in there because you, you want them laying flat so that the plunger can uh, get the same amount of water through them all across. You don't want it uh, going down to the thinner side if it's not laying flat. So we'll get the grounds good and flat in there. The gooseneck tea kettles, I tried using water from the Keurig, but the Keurig's water isn't hot enough. It's only 155 to 165, and optimum coffee making should be done at 175. So that's a, one more reason why the Keurig coffee uh, is not gourmet coffee. So we'll put some water in the, the little tea kettle. It's called a gooseneck for obvious reasons. And uh, let's see, oh, I already have water in it. So we'll just turn that on. The light came on. Now we'll have to just wait for that to heat up. As the noise quiets down from the little Zell kettle, steam will start to come out of it. As the steam comes out of it, look, there it goes. Steam came out, and that button turned itself off. Now we have boiling water, so we will wait a few seconds, about 45 seconds, for that to come down to the temperature that we want it at. And that's at 179. That's close enough. We'll call that good. Now it says to put the water in slowly. Until it gets to this one. And that's all the higher you fill it. Then you stir it for 10 seconds. Then you put the plunger in and squeeze it out into the cup, very slowly. Just take your time. You don't wanna force it through the filters. Too much pressure will cause the coffee to be too weak. It needs to go through the grounds as you're doing this. It goes easier right towards the bottom. Okay. Now we have the filter right here. We'll take, take the uh, filter papers off. Then we will finish pushing the rest of the little puck of coffee out. And there's the little puck of coffee that you get. Clean up is nothing more than just rinsing off the pieces.
there's really nothing in the main tube because the seals on the puck that you push down through cleans that up pretty well. But I just rinse everything. <coughs> and of course the coffee grounds. You just let them run down your sink because they help to clean your sink. You can also put them on your plants for fertilizer. Now the coffee, there's not much in the cup. That's espresso or Turkish coffee. It's very, very strong. You can drink it like that if you want espresso or Turkish coffee. You can fill it up with milk or cream to make a latte or to make American coffee, you dilute it with hot water. And there's how you make a cup of coffee with the AeroPress. The whole unit is very small, easy to carry with you if you want to go camping or if you're traveling. They even make a hand grinder that fits inside the pieces. But you can just assemble this like that and pack some filters. Put this on the bottom for your filter. And that's that's all the room that takes up. You don't necessarily have to take the uh, funnel with you. You might want to take your measuring cup. But that's, uh, the whole unit is pretty small. And uh, you can throw it in a bag on your motorcycle. Or, uh, of course, you can put it in your suitcase. And a, a little hand grinder that they make fits down inside that. So you can take your beans and grind your own coffee along the way. And there we have a perfect cup of coffee. Mmm, it's very good. That was uh, that Starbucks house blend coffee, which is a uh, very good coffee. It has a very short shelf life. Okay, be watching for the test on the Hario V60.